Coach, congratulations on today's win. If you'd like to start with an opening statement, we'll go into questions from our media members on the call. Yeah, just uh, proud of our football team. Um, proud of our finish. Uh, so many guys contributed to today's victory. Um, it was just great to see. Um, and really just and just comprehensive, you know. I mean, I, I defensively um, played the run great, which is what they do best. Um, offensively, I mean, what can you say about, again, Van Dyke and, and to see Harley and, and, and Rambo set records that, that have stood for a long time and probably will stand for a long time. It's just a um, great testament to everything we're doing on, on offensively and got to give the offense line credit blocking Tyler, you know, had all day back there a bunch of times. And, and just, like I said, I'm just, just really happy for the effort that our guys um, came out with today. And again, just it, it's as a coach, see it 12 weeks out of 12 guys are bringing it, playing for each other. A lot of love in that locker room right now. Um, it's a great scene for who we are, celebrating who we are as, as a team. So with that, I'll open up with questions. Thank you, Coach. Coach, we're going to start with Manny Navarro from The Athletic. Manny, go ahead. Uh, hey, uh, Coach, congrats on the victory. Um, obviously, I know uh, a lot of happy people in there, but you got to get to work, I guess, when, when you get back on uh, the recruiting class, just kind of what your thought process is now um, that the regular season is over with um, and, and what you what you attack sort of first here. Yeah, you're right, Manny. We jump right on the road tomorrow. Uh, we'll be in a couple homes. Um, I'll be in a couple homes tomorrow. Coaches will be um, hitting the road, you know, some near, some far. And uh, and it's really a two-and-a-half-week sprint to signing day, you know, to to, to Wednesday, that Wednesday. So, um, you know, it's really important. Like, I, I think, you know, again, the response that we've been getting in the last couple weeks has been really, really positive uh, from the guys we have. And, and, and now we have to – we got to finish – and, I, and if I could, as a quick follow, just what, what did you enjoy most today? Um, maybe about the defensive effort. I know they, they scored on the kick return, but overall defensively, what did you enjoy the most? It just felt like up front, we really got after them. Um, they're, they're, they're good at running the football. And obviously Durant, um, you know, set the record today and, and has, has been one of the top 10 running backs in rush yards all season. So they were a real threat and a real challenge. Um, and it just felt like once we got it, kind of got dialed in after that first series, they just they, they struggled to get something. It felt like to get back to the line of scrimmage. Um, and so, again, I just think I think our front four, I thought the linebackers all played very well. Um, great to see a guy like Chase Smith pop through there on a the fourth down stop. Fourth down was, was a crazy thing today. I mean, we stopped three and we converted three. Um, so just and that, that's why to me, just so many guys contributing. That, that, that's that's the part that just made today a lot of fun to watch. Coach, we'll go next to Gary Furman from Kane Sport. Gary, go ahead. Uh, hey, Manny, how are you? Congratulations on the win today. Thank you, um, Gary. You know, obviously, what all the talk and speculation that's been going on behind the scenes wasn't uh, – you, you weren't in the bubble the last week, week and a half, and I know a lot of it has filtered to you. Now that the season is over, um, can you talk a little candidly about what has or what has not been said to you and and the outlook from here on out in terms of the future Gary all I know is that every week we've had been on a one-week mission and the week this mission was to the mission this week was to beat Duke um and you know what the what I'm proud of is I'm proud of those guys in that locker room I'm proud of how all in they are for this program um you know to do what they've been able to do and finish this the year the way we've been able to finish um you know, you look at, I mean, you look at the young guys out on that field making plays today um, and there's a hunger. They, they, they know that this is not the end. This is the beginning. Um, it's about to get really, really good. And, and they sense that uh, they know the mistakes that we've made this year. We all own it. Um, but to look at the adversity that we've looked at in the eye every week and for these guys to never flinch and week after week to bring it, um, they're, they're, they, they are all in. They're invested in this program. They want to fight for each other. And, and there's a hunger that they have right now um, that we just talked about that's going to last throughout this entire offseason. So, um, like I said, I mean, to me, if it's about the guys in that, in that locker room. And they'd have a chance. If they, if they weren't all in, you, you would see it with how they play. Um, and that's not the case. This, this team is united. Uh, this team will fight for each other. And they're unique because it's hard to find a group of guys uh, with, you know, with the negativity or whatever it is that you mentioned um, that don't flinch, you know, and they've been unwavering in, in their effort. They've been unwavering in their attitude. Um, 
and and that just to me means that the the, the foundation is set. Um, you see you see the young talent start to grow and grow, and, and they're learning and they're getting experience um, in the hunger that those guys have now. You talk to them individually, one on one, it's real, um, and, th and they're ready to do special things. Have you definitively been told that you will be back? That's not no, because I, all I've been told is is hey, let's go win a football game. That's it. That's all I've been focusing on, Gary. That's that's the thing that matters right now. Uh, everything else has been out of my control, so it wasn't really worth worrying about. Um, and I think that's and I think that's the whole point of why the team has been able to finish the way that we've been able to finish. We've been able to identify every week what do we, what is in front of us right now, what are we where where are our feet at, and and let's win where our feet are at. And uh, and like I said, I think that's why they've they've shown the resilience, the resiliency, um, and the mental toughness. Uh, to be able to win five out of six and turn, you know, two and four to seven and five. We're not happy with seven and five, but for where we were and where we're going, I think everybody understands that this is, you know, the way we finish is beyond putting a number up for this year. And we're not done yet. We have a bowl game. But we got to go win. Um, but this is for the future. And if you can't see what the future looks like out on that field today, I mean, it's, it's screaming at you. Thank you. Coach, we'll go next to Tim Reynolds from the Associated Press. Tim, go ahead. Manny, I would never try to get you with a gotcha question. So in full disclosure, knowing that nothing has been announced, can you speak to what Rhett Lashley has meant to you and his program the last couple of years? Well, what we have is we have, a, we have a system. We have an offensive system at Miami, which I think, you know, you see the records that, that were set. Um, we've talked forever about, about bringing the spread uh, to Miami um, and it's here. And I think you see the results you know, Van Dyke and, and the 300 yard passing games, you know what I mean? That's just, that's, it, it's almost becoming expected. And that's, it shouldn't be expected with a, with a freshman quarterback. I, I think, I think the things that Tyler has been able to do this year, make something look easy. That's not easy to do. Um, and that's where we want our program to be. I think it's great to recruit quarterbacks too. I and mean, just look at the, what our quarterback room, it's funny. I, I think about when I was sitting here two years ago and where, where this program was in 2019, where our quarterback room was, it was a big, big fixer upper. Um, and I think Brett Lashley's got a, a, a great hand and, um, and first bringing Derek King here, bringing a system uh, that quarterbacks want to play in. We think we've got a quarterback room that, that is um, we wouldn't trade with any other one in the country. And, and, and the way we're recruiting quarterbacks down the line, we're very excited about the guys that are still to join our program. So if you got a quarterback, you have a chance. Um, and a big key to that is, is you got to have a system that they want to come play in. I think we have that now. That is the Miami system of offense. That's what we will be. Um, and then the last thing I'll just say is that, is that, you know, Rhett Lashley is a phenomenal person to have on your staff and, uh, and Rhett, Rhett's a great person. And like I said, just, just it is, he's, he's been great, great um, to help be a part of transforming uh, this football program. Manny, a quick follow. I know you said you have some home visits tomorrow. Um, and I imagine that continues throughout the week or whatever is allowed <laughs> under recruiting rules. Um, are most of the in-house decisions made? Like, have you talked to the guys who will have decisions to make between now and the bowl game, if they're going to keep going, if they're opting out, if they're opting in, or does, or does that window kind of start now too? With our guys? Our, 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 yeah, that, that starts now. You're, you're really not going to discuss that, um, you know, before, before this point. Um, some, you know, sometimes it depends on where you go and who you play. There's a, there's a lot to it, you know, so we'll, we'll kind of, you know, I think some of that will happen this week. You know, usually those, there's, there's no rush. Um, I think some of that you'll find out the, um, the following week when, when our destination becomes clear. Thank you. We've got a couple more for you, Coach. We'll go to Kobe Price at the Sun Sentinel. Kobe, go ahead. Thanks, Cam. Uh, congrats, Manny, on the win. Uh, a couple questions for me. One, I know Lou, I couldn't tell the pregame. They said nagging injury, neck injury. I guess what was happening with them that kept them out of the game? Yeah, Lou's got a lower body injury that uh, just needed a few weeks of rest. Um, Lou's plan is to come back for the bowl game. Uh, but it was great to see Matias Gast with a bomb uh, there at the end. Um, and Nelson Foley got a, you know, got a, a one out against heavy pressure of 40 yard or so. Um, we felt good about our, our, our putting depth, but it was, it was kind of weird. It's been a long time since we, we played a game without Louis Headley uh, as our punter. So. Yeah, I think it was like 35 straight games or something along those lines. My second question was, we've asked you a lot, obviously, about, you know, whatever you have or have not been told by, I guess, have, do you feel secure? Do you feel secure in your current role at Miami? I feel secure in, in what, how that football team played today. I feel secure in, um, in, in the, the reactions of the players in our locker room. I feel secure that, that those guys 
are bought into our program. And that's, and like I said, that's, that's all I can control is, is the people that, that I've been blessed with the opportunity to lead uh, day in and day out and, and that hear the messaging day in and day out and, and, and go through the drills and the way they practice and the way they do their workouts. Um, you know, and that's, that's, been, that's been our circle. You know, if, if we would have, if we would have thought about other things, uh, we, this, this would have fallen apart in a way that you see in other places around the country. So um, I'm just, like I said, I'm pleased by the vote of, of the guys in that locker room. You can see the, 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 the genuine joy for each other, uh, the way that they love playing. You know, there was, it was a difficult environment today. There's not a lot of energy in that stadium. Um, the way that we brought energy, the way that we competed, guys, and you see at the end of the game when young, younger, I mean, you see the young guys rooting for the young, young guys in the game. We got some walk-ons in there at the end. There was a lot of love um, on that sideline today and a lot of love in that locker room after the game. Coach, last question for you will come from Susan Miller-Degnan. Susan, go ahead. Hey, Manny. Um, congratulations. Exciting game. Uh, Tyler Van Dyke, I mean, you talked about him a little bit. It made unbelievable performance. And, and Rambo and Harley, uh, what they did today, also breaking school records. Can you expound on that a little? And I did want to ask you a follow-up, too. Okay. Well, actually, um, I'm glad you asked because – it bears worth mentioning that Duke played a defense today that they hadn't played all year. They went to an odd free safety look that was completely out of uh, character for the way they have played anybody else this season. So that was one that was the first play of the game. You're like, holy cow, what are they doing? I mean, it was a brand, it was like a, it was like a brand new team showed up. Um, so that's why I mentioned earlier about making things that look easy that aren't easy to do. I mean, for, for a guy like Tyler Van Dyke, if you spend all your weekend film study, all your weekend prepared on, okay, Here's their cover four look. Here's their cover one look. Here's, you know, their, their blitzes and whatnot. And for them to show up in a completely different structure, that's, you know, and to still go for 381 and, and three touchdowns against no interceptions, that is special now. I mean, that's really special. And what it shows is, is that the respect that people have for Tyler and, and Harley and Rambo and the explosive nature, and obviously I think Duke was trying um, as much as possible to try to keep the ball in front to keep our explosive nature um, and make us drive the ball, um, which we're able to do. We, we, we kicked a few field goals where you know, we would have preferred to have some touchdowns. Um, but again, I mean, just to, to be able to adjust on the fly and be able to have the answers and Tyler know where to go with the ball because he was, he was having to go through his progressions. There wasn't a, there wasn't a tip or a tell um, by what they're doing coverage wise, because they, they had, they had all these DBs running around all over the place and you couldn't really tell. So very impressive for those guys. But then when you have guys like Harley and Rambo, I mean, you want to talk about the not they're not those they combined for however many catches today 30 holy cow no 30 targets 21 catches i don't know how many of those catches were like highlight catches i mean mike makes a great sliding catch on the fourth down rambo i mean the one in the corner of the end zone on the fade i mean that's like absurd and i think he had another one that was just crazy and these are these i mean i keep saying it all year charleston rambo is all acc if not all american candidate i mean what a year he's had and 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 you know when he kind of got his feet wet in September and getting comfortable with what we're doing offensively and, and sort of coach Likens, um, you know, teaching, I mean, I mean, he, his emergence changed our offense. And, and now when you see young guys like Keyshawn Smith and Jacoby George and um, Rashard and Romello being able to come up behind guys like Rambo and Harley, that's a transformed wide receiver room. Like it's a transformed quarterback room. Um, and like I said, those, these guys are going to be fun to watch for, for years to come. And, and, Thanks, Manny. And also, uh, Tyreek Stevenson, I know he was sidelined, I guess, with an injury, and, and Jake Garcia was here, and he looked like he wasn't wearing a boot today. Uh, might Jake be back for a bowl game, and what's Tyreek's status? Yeah, Tyreek, uh, the shoulder that knocked him out of the game last week just wasn't well enough to, to be able to get into the game, you know, today. So, so you know, we, we were missing him. We were missing John Ford with an ankle. That's the same thing. It's just, you know, he might have been two more days away. So we miss John. Obviously, we're we missing James. Um, Jake is out of the boot, like you said. I don't, you know, the, the bowl game, I'm not sure. We'll have to see what, when um, that bowl game is and um, if it'd be safe for him to sort of get back um, into, you know, um, drops and, and, and the type of things you need to go play quarterback. So, but we, we, we want Jake to travel because we just want Jake to go through the meetings, go through the preparation and prepare himself like he's a starter. Um, you know, so that, again, he can understand the experience of going on the road, you know, where, knowing where these hotels are. And I know it sounds crazy, but 
there's a familiarity when you're on the road in the ACC and getting to see all these places, um, you know, where the play clock is, stuff like that will help him down the road as well. Manny, well, one more thing. Do you know when they start practicing for a bowl around for a bowl game? Because when, we'll when we'll start bowl practice? Yeah, because I figure they have finals and things like that. Yeah, we have a week of school coming up now. Uh, we got to finish strong. Uh, we'll lift weights a couple, three times this week. Uh, we'll have a quick practice next Saturday. Um, you know, while we've got an official visit weekend going on, you really got another week of recruiting. Yeah, yeah. Susan, you got to think about it. We're, we're all the coaches are all out recruiting, um, so we can kind of have another practice on the weekend, and then once it goes to the dead period, the third weekend in December, um, then we can start to kind of really dive in on the opponent and. and and lay out the practices. It depends again on you know what day in December your bowl game is, and uh, how our calendar will, will go from there. Thank you, Coach Diaz. Thanks for spending a few minutes with us today. Congrats again on the win. Thank you, Cam. Thanks Thank everybody. You.